and federal levels outside of the uh, General Services Administration building here in Washington, D.C. We just uh, wrapped up making our case to the GSA and also to the FBI about why the new FBI headquarters belongs in the state of Maryland. As you can see here, we stand unified as one team, as Team Maryland, representing various areas, and we think making a very important pitch and a very important statement. Because here we know we are talking about a legacy-defining choice. The most significant infrastructure build in the history of the GSA and the most significant physical infrastructure reopening and structure build since the Pentagon and also since the CIA building, which both, by the way, were done in Virginia and have been true catalysts for the measure of economic growth that we have seen inside of Virginia. Where the Biden administration decides to put the new FBI headquarters will inform the mission, the growth, and also the efficacy of the Bureau, not just for this year, but for years to come. And we are certain that bringing the FBI to Maryland is the right choice. It's the right choice in terms of timeline and cost. It's the right choice in terms of transportation. It's the right choice on advancing the FBI's mission. And it's the right choice on equity. And today, my colleagues laid out the case to the public and laid out our case to the GSA and the FBI step by step. That when we're talking about timeline and cost, we informed them that both Maryland sites will be built faster and cheaper than the Virginia sites, upwards of two to four years faster, because the sites in Maryland are actually build ready, unlike the Virginia sites. When we talked about transportation, we informed them that both Maryland sites are right next to public transit. Then when we talk about the FBI's mission, especially where Director Ray says that the future of the FBI's mission will rely heavily on cyber, that we know that Maryland has the brain power, the bandwidth, and the infrastructure with the NSA, the U.S. Cyber Command, top universities like Bowie State, the University of Maryland College Park, and also Johns Hopkins to be able to fulfill that mission. And when we're talking about equity, we inform that the Biden administration has put a real focus on advancing racial equity, making it front and center from day one. And now the president has a chance to honor that commitment with action. So by selecting Maryland, this is about much more than where to just put a building. It's about much more than just where this infrastructure will last. This is about making the right decision for today and also the right decision for the future. And we're very serious when we say that Maryland is the best possible site for the FBI on every single criteria that they laid out. And any reasonable person will look at our candidacy and understand its strength. But right now, we know that Maryland and Virginia are not competing on equal footing, not because of anything that Maryland lacks, but because the selection process that was changed in last September gives away points to our friends across the Potomac. So today, we ask that the GSA and the FBI ensure that this process is fair. We ask that they ensure that this process is transparent. We ask that this process is consistent with the intent of Congress and also the priorities of the Biden administration. And we are eager to hear from the White House and their perspective on this issue as well. Simply stating, all we're asking was a fair and transparent process and one where a thumb is not being put on the scale to unfairly disadvantage a community that has already been historically disadvantaged. And we know with a fair process that Maryland will prevail. I'd now like to turn it over to my friend and colleague, our county executive from Prince George's County, Angela Alsobrook. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, the governor for his leadership. Um, and I'd like to also thank uh, all of our colleagues who are here, our federal delegation who have been stalwarts, really in representing uh, our state and our county in this process now for over a decade. And so I'd like to thank each of them for their leadership. Uh, we had a very productive meeting this morning. Um, I was proud to be with these other leaders who uh, presented to GSA. Administrator Carnahan started our meeting uh, by making certain um, expressions. She indicated that this is the largest single project in GSA's history and that it would be very important to the agency that would, it would be handled in a fair and transparent way uh, and also indicated that she wanted to, uh, to make sure 
um, that the United States uh, interests were protected. We submit to you that locating the FBI in Maryland serves the interest of the United States. It is clear that this process has gone on for over 10 years. There was a very, very competitive process. Prince George's County competed in that process. This started with 35 sites and resulted in the selection of three final sites. Two of those sites are in Prince George's County and one is in Virginia. It is so clear to anyone who looks at the criteria that's been set out over the last 10 years that Prince George's County objectively is the strongest site for the FBI headquarters to be relocated. This site results in, uh, in taxpayer, preserving taxpayer dollars. Uh, you've heard the governor say, and you'll hear others say as well, that we estimate that locating the FBI in Virginia would cost taxpayers upwards of one billion additional dollars. One billion additional dollars. Uh, I think it's very difficult to say that it is in the best interest of the United States to locate this very important asset in a place that would cost taxpayers more money. But additionally, our commander in chief, President Biden, has said very clearly in his executive orders that he expected equity to be a part of the discussion now about how we how we balance federal assets, how we how we place federal assets in ways that do not continue the systemic disparity that we have seen over time. Now, I just want to say one thing. Our friends in Virginia, uh, following our last statement, went out and said, oh, if, if diversity is the issue, if equity is the issue, then you ought to select us because we have more people here with red, blue, or green hair than any place else. How insulting to the concept of equity. The equity that we are talking about is equity that has seen the federal government spend upwards of $460 billion in Virginia and only $121 billion in Prince George's County. Let me make that even clearer. Fairfax County, which is what we're talking about, the federal government has spent $460 billion in that jur jurisdiction and $121 billion in Prince George's County. That's the equity that we're talking about that has allowed that jurisdiction, Fairfax County, to be listed as one of the wealthiest counties in America, the second wealthiest when we talk about income and talk about wealth, Prince George's County is 107th on that list. So what we're talking about in this moment is a site that the, the GSA has determined, speaking of Prince George's County, is a suitable site where the FBI can complete its mission. That's not the question. That's not the question. It's not on the table. What we're talking about in this moment is what's also best for the United States and for the people of the United States. And we believe that Maryland's site allows us to achieve the equity that we're talking about, the fairness that we're talking about, and allows the, the agency to complete its mission. So I want to thank again um, all of the leaders who are here. I want to thank Senator Card, and thank you so much to Congressman Hoyer and, and Congressman Ivey. I want to thank our Lieutenant Governor, also Senator uh, Van Hollen, and, 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 they, and uh, Congressman Trone, and others who have kept this alive for us. And we're so hopeful that if the right thing, if we make the decision based on the criteria that GSA has set out on its own, hands down, Prince George's County wins this competition, and this site will come to Maryland. Thank you. Well, first, I uh, want to acknowledge we had a, a very successful consultation, I think, with the GSA and the FBI. I want to thank Governor Moore and our entire team for putting together a presentation that makes it very convincing that Prince George's County, the two sites, wins overwhelmingly in all five categories that was set up in the site plan if we have objective standards in judging those criteria. Now, we are here today because of action of the United States Congress. In the Omnibus Appropriation Bill, the GSA was required to have these consultations. And I can tell you that was done because Congress was upset when they saw the September selection plan as not being one that you could defend. It showed a clear bias. It was not consistent with congressional intent. It questioned the integrity of the process. And that's why GSA was asked to have these consultations and to look at changes in the selection plan criteria and weighting issues. 
We made that point very clearly, and we went through all the different criteria as to why Prince George's County has the two best sites, whether it's cost or whether it's transit or whether it's a site being ready today or the mission. We have the best sites, but the extra area that we added was equity. That was an issue that the President Biden added. This is hands down in Prince George's County. The only historically underserved communities are in Prince George's County. We made those points very clear. And we, we made the point that if you're going to restore the integrity in the process, if you're going to remove the perception of bias that the thumb was put on the scale to favor Virginia, if you're going to comply with congressional intent, and if you're going to comply with President Biden's executive orders on equity, one which was issued after the site selection plan was issued in September last year, then you need to adjust the plan's criteria. And we specifically asked that we have equal weight for all five criteria. If you're going to do one, make cost the most important, which was weighted only at 10 percent, whereas mission tied to Quantico was weighted at 35 percent. We asked that that be changed. We asked that Quantico be eliminated because that was never mentioned in any of the congressional actions. We asked that the equity criteria be judged the same as the other four criteria are being judged, which was not in the original plan. We, we made these points, and I think it's very clear, as each of us made our presentations, if you give us a level playing field, the FBI will be located in Prince George's County, Maryland. With that, let me turn it over to my colleague on the Appropriations Committee that was very much engaged in this process from the beginning, Senator Van Hollen. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Cardin. It's great to be here with Governor Moore, uh, with County Executive Ulster Brooks, uh, with all my colleagues. Uh, we did have a very productive uh, discussion uh, with representatives from the GSA and the FBI. And as my colleagues have said, all three sites meet the FBI mission requirements. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been on the finalist lists. Two in Prince George's County, one in Virginia, all of them meet FBI mission requirements. As the county executive said, the list started with 35. So they boiled it down to three that they agree are viable sites to meet the mission. So then you've got to look at these other factors, factors that are important to Americans, important to taxpayers. And the two factors where there's a huge divergence between the two Prince George's County sites and the Virginia site are equity. President Biden has been very clear in a, an executive order that providing equity in federal investments is a whole of government effort. Whole of government includes the GSA. Whole of government includes the FBI. And in case they didn't get the message the first time he did it, in the earliest days of his administration, he just recently init issued another one. The other is cost. Now look around here, we're all federal taxpayers. GSA says that it wants to get value for the taxpayer. They say that's one of their very top priorities. So how is weighting the cost of site preparation and getting everything going only weighted 10% as part of their evaluation? The lowest weighting was given the cost to the federal taxpayer. GSA says this is their top priority, but they only gave it 10%. And let me tell you, when it comes to cost, there is no dispute. The Virginia costs, the cost of the Springfield site is far higher, way higher than the Maryland site. In fact, one of the Maryland sites is free to the federal taxpayer because of contributions from the state and county government, free to the federal taxpayer. The Virginia site has two current tenants on that site that have to be moved. It's going to take them time to move. The GSA has conceded they'll have to demolish the current buildings and structures for those two tenants. That's a cost. And if you look at the 2018 document that was put together by the FBI and the GSA themselves, which we presented to them, you will find that even if you use GSA's criteria, it will cost over a billion dollars more to the federal taxpayer to go to the Virginia site as opposed to either of the two 
prince george's county sites a billion dollars g s a regularly comes up before capitol hill and says they don't have enough money to do their operation but they give a billion dollar additional cost of the taxpayer only ten percent weight that will not fly and we made that clear and we're very pleased that g s a and the f b i will be taking our views into consideration as they re evaluate this now let me turn this over to somebody who's been just an incredible leader on this for well over a decade, maybe two decades, Congressman Steny Hoyer. Thank you very much, Senator Van Hollen. Thank you very much, Governor and Lieutenant Governor uh, Miller and uh, Governor Moore. Thank you very much for your leadership. Uh, you're new to leadership in the, in the governorship. You're not new to leadership. You're not new to motivating people. And uh, thank you very much for leading this effort. Thank you. And, uh, Angela also Brooks. We are so proud in Prince George's County of Angela also Brooks, an extraordinary county executive, an extraordinary advocate for the people of Prince George's County, uh, who has been in law enforcement uh, much of her elected uh, life. So she understands the needs for law enforcement. FBI is a law enforcement agency. Glenn Ivey, my colleague from Prince George's County uh, as well. I've been involved in this process since 2009, September of 2009. Director Mueller came to my office and said, we need to get out of a building that no longer serves uh, the FBI and no longer serves the American people. And in fact, at this point in time, is falling down to the extent that they have nets around the building so people walking on the sidewalks will not be injured. The first time Quantico was mentioned as a uh, consideration for sighting of this building uh, was in 2022. I've been at this since 2009. Met with uh, Mr. Comey, met with numerous FBI officials, met with GSA officials. Never was this mentioned as a criteria for where the FBI ought to be sighted. And not only did they adopt it in 22, but they made it 35% out of 100% of the determination uh, being made. The Congress, as Senator Cardin has pointed out, was very concerned about that. And the Congress uh, passed uh, in its omnibus of this in December the requirement that GSA meet with us and with Virginia to determine the credibility and viability, viability is the word that was used, of that uh, assessment of strength of issues. There is no one here in this group that doubts that we win on the four other criteria. So, but for that uh, ranking. So what we said uh, in our, uh, Mr. Van Hollen and I in the Appropriations Committee, we'll do each criteria weighted the same. 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. And that's what this discussion was about. This was a productive meeting in this sense. GSA assured us and the FBI assured us they would go back to the table based upon the information that we had all given them and reassess the correctness of this process. The administrator said at the beginning that it was fair and it was transparent. My view is, frankly, it was neither. Not fair because the criteria of 35% for the location of the building close to uh, not only the uh, Quantico but other FBI facilities was never mentioned. Not transparent because we learned that at the very last minute. So I am uh, hopeful that the GSA and the FBI will in fact go back to the drawing board with the taxpayer considered and certainly with the mission of the FBI uppermost in its mind, will not be affected by any uh, of the, uh, trans uh, excuse me, the uh, location issues. The mission will be served by the building we built, we build that would be built at any one of these three sites. The cost, however, will be substantially more and take substantially longer time to do at the Springfield site. So that I, we look forward to further consultations. 
with the GSA and the FBI. I look forward to getting some statistics uh, that we asked for and other questions answered. Governor, you asked a question, a number of others did. I am looking forward to getting those answers. We will uh, then have additional conversations with both the uh, GSA and the FBI as to the appropriate appropriateness of making a, a selection based upon the merits of each of those sites. I now yield to my uh, colleague who also represents uh, both of these sites. Thank you, Congressman Hoyer. I, I want to be uh, brief, um, but I was very pleased today. I think we made it clear um, to the federal government that we can kill two birds with one stone with this. We can strike a blow against federal redlining in Prince George's County and at the same time save taxpayers over a billion dollars, maybe $1.5 billion. So I'm hoping we'll have a chance for future consultations with them. They're going to go back and digest what we gave them today. But I think the, uh, the evidence is clear that we ought to win on the merits. Uh, it makes sense. It's long overdue, decades overdue as a matter of fact. And hopefully they'll come back with the right decision. So I want to introduce uh, for transportation issues, Lieutenant Governor Miller. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Maruna Miller, uh, Lieutenant Governor, and I also happen to be a transportation engineer. So first off, I want to say thank you to the incredible Maryland uh, delegation that we have here and to the phenomenal county executive, Angela Alsobrooks, and to my friend and my partner, Governor Wes Moore. Governor Westmore and I ran on a mission to leave no one behind, and that includes the entire six million Marylanders that are here in our state. We will not be left behind. That's why we are here today to fight for the FBI and its location to be considered in uh, Prince George's County. Now, you've heard the saying, location, 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 right? Well, in order to make a location successful, you need to be able to have direct access to transportation infrastructure, and there should be options out there. And so the reason why the two locations in Maryland are uh, so much better than the one in Virginia, I'll, I'll give you those reasons. Both Maryland sites, Landover and Greenbelt, offer multimodal options via car, metro, commuter rail, bus, bike, or on foot. Both sites meet and exceed the uh, FBI criteria for the proximity to multiple major commercial airports. And both sites offer flexibility as they are ser also serviced by Prince George's County's The Bus, a local bus route providing connections to key destinations throughout Prince George's County and beyond and both sites are in close proximity to Maryland's numerous higher education institutions, which cements a pipeline for the FBI to train, recruit, and retain highly skilled and diverse workforce that reflect the community that it serves. Furthermore, Greenbelt location is literally 140 feet away, or 140 steps away from the Metro and Mark access. It provides direct metro access to Reagan, uh, Reagan uh, National Airport, direct access to downtown DC without ever having to switch lines. Greenbelt will also connect to the Purple Line, a 16 mile light rail currently under construction that will connect to 21 major hubs across the DMV. The Landover site provides access to three metro stations within a two and a half mile radius. And most importantly, both Maryland sites are all ready to go in every sense. Transportation is no exception. There are already thriving trans hubs with streamlined connections throughout the um, DMV region. As a transportation engineer, I understand commuters' habits and the need to have reliable, accessible, and user-friendly transit. Thus, it's important to select a site that provides more transportation choices, saves time, and minimizes our dependence on single occupancy vehicle. The Maryland sites are truly the optimum, optimal locations for the FBI headquarters. And now I would like to introduce my uh, dear friend um, and the terrific congressman from Maryland's 6th Congressional di uh, District, Congressman Mufume. 
I'm sorry. Who's counting? Seventh. Who's, <laughs> sorry who that. in the hell is counting, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go, a bit more redundancy, so bear with us, because not everything has been said by everybody. Two things. First, I want to say a word about how we got here and why we're so fired up. And then secondly, just to say something about the rules change and why a sports metaphor will help you understand why we are doing what we are doing. This began, as you heard, years and years ago with Steny Hoyer and Ben Cardin working to find a way to get Maryland to be a finalist out of 30-some proposals to locate the largest project ever of the GSA. And they went at it over and over and over again in year after year. And it narrowed and it narrowed, and so much so that this time last year, it was clear to many of us that Maryland was going to get the selection. We won on everything you can think of. Now, most of all, we won on cost. And as has been said earlier, you just can't tell taxpayers, oh, we're going to make you pay one billion or a billion and a half more because we like this site just because it's closer to where we want to be. No, those days are over with, and that argument does not hold up. We went on equity, we went on diversity, we went on transportation, as you just heard. But most of all, we win technically and realistically because this is the right thing to do. We started out believing that there was going to be one set of rules, that the 100-yard dash was going to be the 100-yard dash. And then when we start to run in the game, all of a sudden, it's a 200-yard dash. And then in September of last year, somebody put their finger on the scale and changed the rules. So all of a sudden, the things that we worked around and prepared for and developed were no longer as important. Everything else seemed to rise. Cost went down in terms of a legitimate aspect of this. And everything you can think of, particularly proximity to Quantico, became an issue. Now, you can't be any closer to Virginia while you're in Virginia. OK, let's start with that. So that was unfair. Secondly, and most importantly, is that every time we tried to bring this up, no one wanted to deal with it. So finally, doing something right, the Congress of the United States said, oh, no, you have to go back and look at this in a fair lens and be prepared to do a reset. And so that's how we got here today. This was our day in court, if you will have it. And in reality, this is, in fact, the fourth quarter of this process. And we came here playing like we're under the two-minute rule. And that's why you see such a united delegation winning on every aspect that was ever raised. And we hope and pray that at the end of the day, fairness will rule, equity will rule, the sort of disinvestment that we've seen in communities like Prince George's County will end, and that people will have reason to believe that you can be right and you can win. Thank you very much. And I'm going to ask Governor Moore to come back and wrap us up. You're not Governor Moore, but you're the Governor I'm not Governor yet. Uh, we're so lucky to have Governor Moore here today, but just as a business guy, I mean, just, I sit on the Appropriations Committee, I sit on the subcommittee that appropriates the FBI. How in the world do you not count one, one and a half billion dollars of better cost to the taxpayer and say that's 10 percent? That's not 10 percent of this issue. That's like the whole issue. A billion, a billion and a half dollars, we got to count that. We should count it twice. Second point is, we've got a real, real issue here on a red herring. The last minute for Virginia to drop in a red herring, the proximity to Quantico. That doesn't sound right. That sounds, we got some pro big problems here underlying. It's where the FBI folks live is in Fairfax County. They have put their finger on the scale and the GS has been complicit on that finger on the scale, but to wait that 35% is pure insanity. It's wrong. The future folks in the FBI, when it goes to Prince George's County, where it belongs, will be living often in Prince George's County. 
There's going to be a change, and the FBI needs to get with the program on this. So thank you. Congressman now we have Congressman Sarbanes. Sarbanes. Thank you, and I want to thank the governor, and I want to thank the county executive and our, and our, our delegation. Um, I just want to emphasize again something that Congressman Infume said, which is that the Congress of the United States in the last couple of months instructed the GSA to do a reassessment, a relook, a reevaluation of this process. That's what we were presenting today. And from that relook, there needs to come a reset, as Congressman Infume said. If there is a reset and the process is fair, then Maryland wins this competition. Governor? Thank you so much, Congressman. Thank you. This time, if uh, we'd love to feel any questions we might have. Yes. Yeah, I think we, we come out of that meeting understanding how serious this decision is. I mean, this is the biggest, this is the biggest and largest project that GSA has ever, has ever decided on. So this is, a, this is very serious business. And, and I understand why people in Virginia, they might have, uh, they might have seemed exuberant because last September, the rules were changed to inherently benefit them. And what today was, it was a challenge of that. And it was simply saying if you stick to the rules that were laid out on every single category that were laid out in the original rules and the original intent, Maryland wins on every single one. And one of the, and of the few takeaways that I think we, we took from today's meeting was first, GSA was very clear that the, the indication of the change that happened in September, that is not locked in stone. And they are now going to go back with all the information and all the data and actually be able to have an opportunity to both work in coordination with us, but also reassess that decision in September to put such a heavy weight on one of the on one of the options. The other thing was all the data that was laid out, especially when we talk about what Senator Van Hollen uh, uh, laid out in terms of put, putting together the, the aspect of cost, how this is going to cost upwards of a billion dollars more to put in Virginia. Nobody challenged that number. No one at GSA or FBI said, no, that's incorrect. And so this is going to make the best argument for the American taxpayer to put inside of Prince George's County. Also, when looking at the executive order, the two executive orders that President Biden has put out around equity and saying that, you know, and I think as a county executive uh, so smartly and rightfully pointed out, do not make a mockery of the president nor his executive orders. Then when we're talking about we need to make sure that there's a lens on equity in every single facet of, of, uh, of, of the administration and every single bureau, every single agency, do not make a joke of that. And so the thing that I think we continue to push on today, and while I think we leave here uh, confident, but also leave here understanding the seriousness of this, is this is a decision that is going to have a legacy-defining impact for the Biden administration and a true generational impact on the impacted communities. There's only one right answer, and that is for this building to end up in Maryland. So the, the only indication that they gave to us was at the time of the decision uh, that they wanted to make sure that, that other elements were, uh, were, being, were being factored in. So the honest answer is no. There was no definite answer as to what were the core indicators that were putting and making that change. Now, they were very clear that those were, that decision that was made in September is not locked in stone and that they would go back and be able to reevaluate everything after speaking with us and speaking with Virginia, and we as a delegation and we as Team Maryland plan to hold them to that. Yeah, no, we, we, we do feel that, uh, that the, the decision makers, I think is, uh, as, as, as our leader, Congressman Hoyer, set out, that the, the decision makers were in this room. 
and people who are going to have influence as to what is going to be the final decision. And so we do feel like we got a fair hearing. Uh, we're assuming we got a fair hearing, and we're assuming that the follow-up that was promised by them is going to be real, is going to be consistent, and is going to be honored. We are also, uh, we're also anxious to hear from the opinion from the White House on this. This is, a, this is an important legacy-defining statement and item for the White House and from the Biden administration. And so we're hopeful that the White House is also going to make sure their opinion is also heard in this as well. We are, very, we are very much hoping that the president uh, uh, continues to lean on these agencies to help them understand what his personal opinion on this. He's been very clear on making sure that we are going to both make sure that we are going at the best decision that's going to advantage the American taxpayer and that equity is important and is not to be made a mockery of. And so, yes, we are hoping that the President of the United States himself also puts his opinion as to where this building should, locate, should be located. I'll take first off. Thank you. That, that's a great question. Um, and I'll answer it this way. You say what is lost. It's already been lost. All of the opportunities to grow Prince George's County's economy in the same way that Fairfax has. And again, the numbers speak for themselves. This is not something we believe has happened. If you look at the median income, uh, for example, of Fairfax County, which is about a hundred and thirty-nine or hundred forty thousand dollars compared to Prince George's County's median income that is ninety thousand dollars. If you look at the fact that again the federal government this is taxpayer dollars that we should all have an equal opportunity to have invested across the country but we've invested four hundred sixty billion dollars of it in Fairfax County and hundred and twenty one billion dollars of it in Prince George's County. These kinds of investments yield all kinds of economic benefits to various communities. If we look, for example, at what has, at the benefit of having the Pentagon located in Northern Virginia, these are policy decisions that the federal government has the opportunity to make. And look at how Northern Virginia has developed as a result of the policy decisions of the past, 1941, to be exact, is when we decided the Pentagon would go there. But these kinds of decisions grow those communities. And you can look at Prince George's County, look at the fact that we're 102 in terms of wealth and income compared to Fairfax County, that is number two, number two. So there's no comparison. And again, the facts speak for themselves. So when we talk about equity, we don't want to be boxed into some sort of um, fantastical. This is, a, this is an actual disparity that can be borne out in numbers. And so the, the loss has already been experienced by Prince George's. We're asking now this agency to follow the lead of our commander in chief, who has said that it is his priority. And he said it on more, more than one occasion, that we will correct, correct these decisions that were made in past years that have really given benefit to communities at the expense of other communities similar to Prince George's County. Prince George's County, it's important for me to say this, we're not asking for anything we don't deserve. We competed in a competition with 35 sites in the final, two of the final three sites were, we won. We were determined to be able to, to fulfill the mission of the FBI. They were able to fulfill their mission at these sites that we, based on all of the criteria that the others were judged on, everything from transportation to environmental impact, all of those areas, Prince George's rose to the top. This site deserves to be in Prince George's and deserves to be in Maryland. Well, the, the only thing that they've uh, indicated to us is that this is of highest priority and they plan on this decision being made soon. So there was no definitive timeline that was, uh, that was given to us, but we do know that we feel very confident in the pitch that we made. We know that Virginia will, uh, will, will be here and ha also have the conversation with them, but we look forward to next steps and we look forward to them reevaluating the, uh, the criteria that they've laid out prior. Don't know if there'll be another in person. We are we are uh, very excited and prepared to meet with them anytime and anywhere in any capacity to be able to make our case because we know that once as Maryland makes its case that there's only one right decision and that's for the FBI building to be in the state of Maryland. Well, I, I think that uh, that 
the, the president has been consistent about how important equity is inside of his inside of the administration not just putting together one executive order but two executive orders instructing his departments instructing the agencies that as they are making these decisions that these type of issues and the lens of equity should be considered and will be considered in all the decisions are being made and I think when you look at all the key criteria and the, and the areas that we've made out and the arguments that we have made, that this is going to be better on cost for the American taxpayer, that we have the transportation assets that are ready right now to be utilized and leveraged, that we are the only site of the finalist sites that is ready to be built on right now, that we have a chance when you look at the mission, especially with Director Ray talking about oh, a huge component of the future mission of the FBI is going to be cyber, that we are actually the, we are the state that has the infrastructure and the assets right now that can be leveraged to meet that new mission, but then also looking at this view of equity. So we are very clear that this is, this is a legacy defining decision for the Biden administration. And we believe that when the decision is made to move the building to the state of Maryland, it will be a continuation of that commitment. And you can see how that executive order and the words that have been put together, this is what it looks like in action when you make sure that the, that the, that the state of Maryland is seen and this building ends up in our jurisdictions. Thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.